Welcome to Barbecue Today. I'm your host, Eric Riches, and today we're gonna to be making burgers. But not just any burger, we're gonna be making pellet grill burgers. The kind of burger that takes advantage of what a pellet grill does best, but real hardwood smoke directly into meat. As pellet grills have exploded in popularity, people are looking for ways to take their grilled favorites, their summertime favorites, and cook them on their pellet grill, taking advantage of what that pellet grill can do. So we're gonna make burgers. It's about as simple as you can get, but we're gonna do it differently. The traditional way for making burgers, for grilling burgers, is to you make up your burger patties, you season them, and you throw them on there hot and fast. We're gonna do it a little bit differently. This method is sometimes referred to as a reverse sear kind of a misnomer, but it describes the basic idea. We're gonna make our burgers, we're gonna get them seasoned up, we're gonna put them on the pellet grill as low as we can get that pellet grill to go, and we're gonna cook them for a long time, 45 minutes to an hour. Then, we're gonna take the burgers off, we're gonna crank up the heat, and we're gonna sear those burgers. We're gonna get that crusty surface on the outside. Get a bit of a crunch on there, plenty of smoke flavor. So, I have here about three pounds of ground beef. Pretty typical grocery store stuff. I'm gonna form these into burger patties. I'm gonna season with salt and pepper. Now I know what a lot of people say, put your seasonings in there, then mix it all up. Now the secret to a great burger is to touch the meat as little as possible. If I mix the pepper and the salt in there, I'm gonna to have to get in there and I have to really mix it together. So I don't have pockets of pepper or salt. Now you can use other seasonings if you want, but I'm gonna keep this relatively simple. It's about the process. And we want that smoke and the beefiness of our burgers to stand out more than any seasoning. So let me make up some burger patties, we'll get them seasoned, and we'll get to the grill. So I got my pellet grill preheated. Today I'm gonna to be using the grill of Silverback. This is a, a good traditional pellet grill. Comparatively inexpensive, reliable, it's a good solid unit, but it's uh, very traditional in its design. So we have the fire pot down below. We have a big plate to deflect the heat. Now, there's a lot of pellet grills been coming on the market recently. They have direct flame capabilities. Uh, they'll reach temperatures of 600 to 650 degrees. If you're using one of those, we'll have a little modification towards the end. But for any pellet grill, what we want to start out is as low as it will go. So. Turn it on, set it to its lowest possible temperature, let it come up, and now we're gonna put our burgers on here. And we're gonna let them cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. So they're practically done. And the reason we're gonna do that is because going at that very low temperature, the meat's gonna be able to absorb a lot more smoke. We're gonna get a long cook time without overcooking the burgers and get as much smoke flavor in there as we possibly can. So let me get those burgers on. You can see, I've actually gone for a pretty thick burger patty. One of the great things about this method is you can literally make these burgers as big as you want. You might have to cook them longer, but it doesn't really matter that much. Cooking at this low of a temperature, they're not gonna dry out. So, I'll be back in about 45 minutes to check on these. So my burgers have been on for about 45 minutes. And as you can see, they've developed this deep reddish color. So, let's talk about internal temperatures. You look up on any of those charts, you find all over the place, it's gonna tell you that ground beef is cooked at 165 degrees. And that's true. Well. It's not really true. It's safe to eat at 165 degrees, provided that there was bacteria in the meat and you needed to cook all of that off. There may or may not be bacteria in the ground beef I have here. We wanna be safe, but there is some space to uh, move around with a little bit. I mean, if you go to a, you know, a nice restaurant and order a hamburger, they might ask you how you want that done. And if you say medium rare, well, you're talking about a 130, 135 degree burger. It's going to be pink in the middle. According to the USDA and pretty much every other health group in the world, it's not going to be safe to eat. That's why that menu has that warning label on here. But 
we're cooking these at a really low temperature, low and slow. So we can go a long time with this. They're gonna absorb more smoke the longer we cook. And they're not gonna really dry out because we're not exposing it to intense temperatures. They're gonna stay moist, they're gonna stay tender. I mean, when I was temp checking these, they're still very soft. So uh, we can let these get up to as high a temperature as we wanna go. Um, of course, within reason. So we can get these up to 155 degrees and then we're gonna finish them off at a high temperature. They'll be cooked, they'll be safe, they'll be tender, and yet we still wanna be able to get a nice crusting on the outside. Now this pellet grill has a max temperature of about 450 degrees on a warm day without the wind blowing. Most pellet grills are like that. If you happen to have one of those pellet grills that'll do 600, 650 degrees with direct flame, all you're gonna need to do is turn up the temperature on this to as high as it'll go. You don't even have to take them off. But, well, here we don't have that advantage. So we're gonna look for some better solutions. So my burgers are pretty much ready for our next phase here. Um, I'm gonna pull them off and let, get this heated up as high as I can. And I'm gonna put this big cast iron pan in here that I have. Let it get really hot. And that's gonna give us a lot of transfer heat. So let me go in, get a tray, get those burgers off there, then crank this up as hot as it'll, as hot as it'll go. Okay, so the burgers are off and covered. Grill has heated up about as hot as it's gonna get. Handle's warm. It's good temperature. It's about 95 degrees here in a nice Austin summer. So I've got some onion slices on there. Those are gonna go on top of my burgers. Let's put these right in this pan. You can hear that sizzle. I'm gonna let that go literally minute, minute and a half. Uh, then we'll flip it over, get the other side, it'll all be seared, cooked, and they'll be perfect. I like these burgers with a nice bit of onion on top and blue cheese. I think it complements the smokiness of them perfectly. Uh, whatever else you wanna put on there, perfectly fine. You can uh, throw some barbecue sauce on there, give them a little bit of that flavor if you like. Uh, but you know, you do you. Okay, so a little over, about a minute and a half or so. Get a good sear on here, That's all we need. I'm gonna flip them over. Let them go on the other side for about 90 seconds more. They have a deep, rich color. Um, this is gonna be delicious. This is really the best pellet grill burger. It's deep smoke flavor, but it's still got a great burger flavor to it. So you have a pellet grill, this is kind of the way you wanna do it. I know an hour sounds like a long time to cook a burger, but you know, it's worth it.